Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. We are using napkins and stencils. Here are the two napkins that I used. They're both available at miniesnapkins.com. The names are in the description box below. So I love hummingbirds and I love this napkin, but I admit I really didn't know what to do with it. The scale of the hummingbirds is a little bit small, so I couldn't really be using them for a focal point on a full-size art journal page. But, you know, today I decided, you know, I'm just going to put something down. I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know how I'm going to showcase this napkin. But I just started. And sometimes you just have to tell yourself that. So I am just gluing the napkin down with my fluid matte medium love the bright colors of this. This one is called Hummingbirds on a Trellis or something like that. You get that honeycomb um, hexagon pattern in the background. I'm piecing together the napkin here and I like the flow across the page. I'm thinking, okay, you know, I can put a focal point or a sentiment on the upper part. So I want to soften the edges and to blend it with whatever I do end up putting on the background. So I'm putting a coat of gesso. I'm going over top of some of the napkin. I wasn't exactly sure where I want it to go with it. So now that I have a better idea, making it a little more natural, I'm also going to paint out some of the hexagons or the parts in the trellis just to remove some of the detail there. There's so much going on. And I guess that was the part of the challenge with this napkin. But remember, the napkin is just the start. It's the jump off point. You can alter it, cut it, reposition things, and even paint over it to paint out some elements as well as paint in some elements. It's just the guide, as are stencils. So I chose this honeycomb stencil and I was going to do the removing paint through a stencil. So I put the blue there and removed it and I liked it, but I really liked that when I really, I just stamped with the stencil. So I grabbed a baby wipe to wipe that blue off and I like the muted color. So I've just used the baby wipe and my light blue permanent paint and I base coat my page, including on top of the napkin because I wanted to introduce that blue, you know, the, the sky would be visible through the trellis in my mind. This is very modeled and imperfect and I love that. So the colors as well as the hexagon shape come from the napkin. So since I like that stamping with the stencil, I grab my gel plate and I use a slightly darker blue, spread it on the gel plate with my brayer, press into the gel plate, kind of using it like a stamp, and then I press it on the page. It needed a little bit more paint there, it needed to be a little wetter. And voila, so that's stamping with a stencil. And I think I'll be using that technique a little bit more because I really like that effect. Now here I was having so much fun playing with that technique, trying to perfect it, that I got a little carried away, which is kind of the theme of this page. But often that's the case when you don't have a set plan and you're just trying things. So the journey might take a little longer but you come up with some really great discoveries. Then I grabbed this scroll work stencil and I grabbed the magenta, quinacridone magenta and I'm using a makeup sponge to stencil on. I picked that color again out of the flowers that's in the napkin. Now, if you're sitting there and thinking to yourself, oh, Karen, you're getting, it's getting so busy. You are absolutely right.
it got extremely busy here. So if you have something that's too busy, you want to knock it back, grab white. So I grab that honeycomb stencil and I'm stenciling white over. This is pushing everything back. It's muting some of the colors, getting rid of some of the pattern. And it overall improved it from what it was. It's still not done as a background. There was a lot of stopping and thinking, okay, what's missing on this page? Now, for whatever reason, I did not tape off the coils at the top. So I've got the paint all the way through there, all the way to the top. Usually I tape off to get a straight edge there. So I'm liking this background now. I've also added a little bit of green in it. I just rubbed it into the wet paint. Now I want these hummingbirds, even though they're tiny, to show up a little bit more. So I am using a combination of the blues, the greens, the pink for the flowers, and white gesso to paint over them and get kind of a painterly effect. This does two things. It, it kind of makes it my own. It also is brightening those colors and making the birds pop out. Now I spoke about loving hummingbirds and right now it's, it's spring on Vancouver Island. And while the hummingbirds here are here all winter, the flurry of activity right now at the feeders at any given moment it has increased. You know, I can daily watch the hummingbirds, multiple hummingbirds on each feeder. And I just love that, which is why I have a collection of hummingbird napkins and stencils. So now I've decided I want a little bit more pink. I need, everything's too muted. I want to bring out that pop of pink. So I stenciled this flower from this hummingbird stencil and something was lacking. So now I'm coming in with modeling paste and going right over top of those flowers and I'm going to be painting them again. But this now has added texture and I really like what happens here. It, it makes them stand out a little bit more, it makes them, they're 3D, they're texturized with the, the modeling paste from the crafters workshop. There are affiliate links to Ninny's Napkins and TCW's Shopify link, as well as Amazon in the description box below. There are coupon co codes as well. Now I'm just trying to decide what sentiment, and I just have a couple sentiments there, more for sizes. I could have used the hummingbird stencil, but I remembered I had another hummingbird napkin and I like the scale of the napkin hummingbird a little bit more. So once I found that, I thought, okay, now look how nice that pink butterfly is. That solid block of pink looks so good. I grabbed this plumeria stencil and I thought, okay, what if I stenciled more solid pink at the top? somehow to ground that page. We need something solid. We've got so many littler components on this page that I need to make give, give it some substance, some weight. I flip through my, my sentiment packs and I pick this one, Believe in the Magic, that comes from my sentiment pack number three, which is a good overall multi-purpose sentiment pack, a good variety, different fonts and sizes. Now I've stenciled out on that napkin, on the whites of the napkin, just for being able to move it around and audition where I might want to position that. My plan is to use modeling paste and to actually put it on the page, but this allows me to move things around and audition them. And sometimes when I'm auditioning different options. I will grab my camera and or my phone and take a picture of the options and then look at it at the photos and I can compare. Somehow that helps me see it from a distance. And 
and I can decide which one do I like best. So now that I've decided on the focal image and the sentiment, and I'm going to put that, those flowers, plumeria flowers in the top, I'm going to paint out the texture paste, modeling paste, that I put on the bottom here. Now I'm taking some white gesso and I'm just basically globbing it on top of the modeling paste. giving it a solid base. I'm using gesso. I want the gesso is going to allow the paint to take in a better way on top of the modeling paste. And it's filling in some of the areas in between the stenciling. Then I decide that my background, it just there wasn't enough contrast. I needed some black. So I grabbed the these stamps from the Sacred Geometry Stamperia set and this script stamp. And I'm stamping with black acrylic paint. I have that on a glass mat on the side and I'm brayering it on top of the stamps. Love that one stamp there. And I think this just added so much really important detail to that background. I have black paint and a makeup sponge, so I'm just edging my page a little bit now. You know me if you've watched me before. Probably going to come back and do more of this later, and I do. So I'm finally really happy with all the elements, but, you know, this it took some time for this to all come together. This page probably took over two hours and I did it in several different sittings. There was some think time, you know, where I just set it aside and I let, I just thought about it. So here I'm just globbing on paint. And while yes, right now this, this is sped up. When I'm doing this, I am not being overly particular. I have learned that sometimes being a little looser, being a little bit um, freer with it, you end up with a better effect. Don't overthink it. Don't get, don't be, try to be so ex precise. Maybe I've let go a little bit of my perfectionism. So I'm added, I've added these flowers and I've added that pink to it, which I really like. I think it was important with this very pastel y background. And I'm globbing on white gesso. And it's they're acti it's acting as highlights. So this is the plumeria stencil, and I'm putting the TCW white modeling paste through the stencil at the top. And then I'm going to paint this out with gesso just like I did the ones that I did at the bottom. I'm painting and I'm going in between. So I'm basically covering up anything that was in the background, getting rid of all the lines. And I am not, again, I am not being very precise. <clears throat> So even before this is dry, I'm going to come back in with the colors. So here I'm using Hooker's Green with white gesso for all the, the leaves and the greenery. And I am just globbing it on. And now I'm coming in with quidacridone magenta and doing the plumeria blossoms. And this solid pink was just the right 
addition for this page. I think this just made the page. Before that's dry, I'm coming in with white gesso, and you can see how it's just adding highlights. Now it's time to glue down the hummingbird from the other napkin. And because there's some dark right under where the napkin's going down and the napkin tends to go translucent, I'm just putting a little white gesso just to push that back a little bit so I don't get that dark coming through when I glue down the hummingbird. I'm using Fluid Matte Medium from Liquitex Basics to glue this down. And I'm putting it on top and as well as under. And I'm gluing the sentiment down with the same way. In the end, I'm really liking the how this page turned out. But I am not lying when I told you at the beginning that I really had no idea what I was going to do or how I was going to make this all work. I put with the Rangers blending tool some black acrylic paint and I'm just rubbing it gently over top of the texture, the high points. You can wipe it back if you need to. This is just adding some shading in a very quick, easy way. Again, I'm not overthinking it. I'm adding more shading around the edge of the paper, and I want to get more, like, more black showing on the front. Now, I didn't like the fact that I forgot, didn't put the, didn't tape off the edge, and I thought, oh, maybe I'll just paint it black. I should have left it just as it was and omitted this step. But, you know, live and learn. Now I want to do some shading around the napkin, the focal image here. I grabbed my General's Charcoal. This one is the soft, and I'm smudging it a little bit to add shadows. And then I grabbed the medium one for the line work on the napkin. Now you wanna make sure that that is completely dry. If it's wet and you go with a pencil and put any pressure, you know you're going, you're running the risk of ripping the napkin. So make sure it's dry and you know, remember that it is a napkin and it is going to be fragile. So I'm just adding some line work there, kind of sketchily. I start to sh shade around this and I don't like the effect, but because it's charcoal and there's matte medium on top of it, I could wipe it off with a baby wipe. And then I came in with my Secura glaze. It just needed something to outline it. It just looked unfinished just to leave it. So here is the finished page. I love it so, so, so much, and I hope you do too. So let's do the recap. These are my journal process cards, and if you're interested in buying them, you can just let me know. I'm thinking about making that available to people. We started with this napkin, smaller scale, and it's basically in the background, but it set the theme and set us on the color scheme and everything. I applied a base coat of color using a baby wipe, a wet baby wipe and paint. I st stenciled and then I stamped with the stencil and I stamped with acrylic paint as well, although that was later on in the process. But if I knew I was going to do it, I would have done it much sooner. I put modeling paste through the stencil, these flowers on the bottom, and this plumeria stencil at the top. I painted the focal images in the napkin part to
to get a painterly effect. And I painted the flowers and the plumeria as well with that painterly effect. I applied paint to the textured areas with the Ranger blending tool to give it shading. I used the napkin, I went and got another napkin and I used this one as a focal image. So we have supporting napkins and main napkin. I shaded with the General's charcoal. I added a sentiment to the page and I edged the page with black. Check out the links in the description box. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Check out the close-ups. Bye for now.